Hello guys, back for another video. Now first thing you might notice, you probably haven't seen this background before. That's a very recent addition to my room. You know, I was pretty tired of all my walls looking like this. Very interesting sight, isn't it? Ah, 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 ah. This is more like it, that's good. The first reason I put all this up is because, as you know, uh, unless you're new to my channel, I'm a big World War II, well, you know, a lot of history really, but I'm, particularly I'm a big Second World War history buff. These are all World War II, um, you know, recruitment posters. Now let me guess right, you know what the topic of this video is going to be about, maybe from the description of the title, but let me guess, the first thing you noticed when I moved my head then was probably this, wasn't it? Now the reason I say that is because if you guys, um, you may or may not know, a guy on YouTube called Kiwi Ted Fernie, He's a big uh, history buff like myself, and he's from New Zealand. He did a video on the L1A1 SLR rifle a while ago, which obviously isn't related to World War II. But uh, in the background, you could see his German memorabilia display. And he had a big swastika flag in the background. And despite the fact his video was not at all about um, anything Nazi-related, it's about a rifle which came much later. All half the people could comment on was, why do you have a big swastika flag in your background? You're weird. Now, I can understand why some people would say that, but what those people don't seem to realise is that that's part of a history display that he has. You know, it doesn't mean he's a neo-Nazi, no more than I'm a neo-Nazi, because I've got a poster with a swastika right there. The thing that you might be forgetting is that when most people see a load of posters like this, whether they walk in someone's room or they see it on a video, they'll often assume that um, that person's all has a bit of a Nazi fetish. You hear that a lot, particularly in the UK. You know, there are a lot of collectors out there which will collect only Nazi stuff. You know, memorabilia, weapons, whatever. I can totally understand why they do that. A lot of people would say, you know, why do you want to have a room full of content which, which reminds you of you know, one of the darkest periods in human history, you know, the Nazi occupation of Europe, etc., the Holocaust, things like that. Times back then were so different to what we now know as the, you know, the safe Europe, where there aren't wars between all the nations, and people are not living in that situation anymore, so that why, that's what exactly why it makes it interesting to compare how times were back then to how they are now. That's why any extreme regime, you know, like, you know, with Hitler, or with the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin and all the others, you know, things like that are interesting. It's why the Russian Revolution, particularly, is interesting to so many people, because it shows how it totally, almost overnight, there was just an uprising against, you know, the Tsar, and Tsar Nicholas and his whole family were executed, and then, after the Civil War had finished, it was the Soviet Union. And it made that transformation in just, you know, a relatively short period of time from one extreme to the other. That's why that, you know, particular event, the Russian Revolution, is very interesting to a lot of people. Hitler went from being, you know, a nobody, pretty much, as a lot of people described as a failed artist, went on to being drafted into the First World War, came out, was sent to spy on the Nazi party, or the National Socialist Party, as it was called, and he ended up becoming a member and eventually he got to the top of it. And he restored Germany from being a totally broke, starving country at the end of World War I, um, to an ex one of the biggest military powers in the world, and the biggest military power in Europe at that time. I know that was somewhat of a digression, but I thought all that was relevant to say, just to, so you might understand better why a lot of people collect this stuff. It's because it's an extremely fascinating part of history. I, I actually wanted to make this video, it's been boiling up for a little while on this subject, but um, I watched a video earlier of someone firing a German MP40 submachine gun, and the top comment, which the user, the poster of that video had replied to, was someone saying, why are you firing a... MP40, a Nazi weapon that was probably used to commit genocide. You know, there are thousands of grandchildren whose grandparents were murdered with that gun that you, of which you are holding one of. Now I sort of think, and things like that, you know, no disrespect to anyone that lost relatives back in the war, but for people that haven't and just want to, you know, complain, the way I can best answer that is like I said, no disrespect to anyone that lost relatives, but please just get over yourself. You were not even around then, so that's plenty of time for you to sort of just accept what happened and move on. You know, stop slamming people that just want to collect pieces of history. 
Now, it's not even people that just collect weapons. I mean, that's a whole different topic altogether. There's a lot of people which are against guns and things like that, gun ownership, but that's not what this video is about. I've made separate videos on that, if that's what you want to hear, but I'm just talking about solely people collecting items from Nazi Germany, whether it's weapons or, you know, memorabilia, letters, uniforms, medals, anything like that. I think, you know, too many people with that interest really just get a lot of slamming. Now, I get a little bit of it on some of my videos of uh, the German weapons I've got, but then I don't just collect German stuff, I've got stuff from loads of different countries. But the reason I'm very interested in, you know, Nazi Germany and the German side of everything back then was because uh, my granddad was originally from East Prussia, which doesn't exist now, it's now part of Poland. And at the age of 17, 16 or 17, he was drafted into the Wehrmacht in late 1942. So he was in the German army, and I'm half German, and my mum's side is all, you know, part German, of course. And the reason I own, half the reason I own one of the objects behind me is because of my granddad. This, right, this is a German Mauser K98 rifle. And... You know, there are a lot of people which say, oh, why would you want to own a gun that was used by the Nazis, blah, blah, blah. Now, let me explain one thing to you. Most German soldiers were not even members of the Nazi party. They were simply drafted. They had no control over who was in power. They was either join the army or prison firing squad. I mean, which would you rather do? You'd obviously join the army. You have a chance that way, don't you? So go and learn more about that, essentially. The difference between a German soldier and a Nazi. Learn about that. But this is the exact same model of rifle my granddad would have carried, along with almost every other standard rifleman in the German army. This was their standard issue. So for that, it's almost sentimentally, to me, a piece of family history. Because this, you know, this was an item that my granddad used, you know, through his service in the Second World War. And anyone who knows, you know, who's been in the military, your rifle is almost like your closest friend. When it's you alone out there, stuck in a hole, it's just you and your rifle. So, that's why they're big pieces of history, and that's why, you know, to anyone who's into military history, they're very interesting. And, you know, the guy, like I said, who was on the video earlier, saying that, uh, you know, if you want to fire an MP40, I can understand, but why fire one that has Nazi symbols on it, swastikas, you know, Waffenamt marks, as they're called? Well, to be honest, if you're firing a World War II weapon made in Germany that doesn't have swastikas on it, it's probably even not an original or a real one. Because the Germans were pretty obsessive with sta mm, excuse me, stamping swastika eagles absolutely everything. This is an original K98, this was made in 1937, and it's totally untouched, it's got all the German markings still on it. And that's why it's an interesting piece of history. Now people can, you know, can go on to the argument to say, well, anything of that period. I've seen this comment a lot. They should just destroy anything German from that period. Well, I totally disagree with that. A little while ago, I heard on the radio, somebody, I don't know what country it was in, but they discovered some papers which apparently were Hitler's. I don't know what it was about. I can't remember. I might have to go look it up again. And a guy called in and he said, I personally think they should be destroyed because at the end of the day they're only going to be purchased by someone for a stupid amount of money who has a Nazi fetish. And I was like, ah, see, there we go again, you see. Should those papers be destroyed? You know, Adolf Hitler, undoubtedly one of the most evil dictators of all time, wrote those. But should they be destroyed? Absolutely not. I'll tell you why they shouldn't be destroyed. Because there might be things written in there which could give us insight to things we might not have known. That is the main reason. The other reason is they're pieces of history. Now, I'd rather that a private collector didn't buy them. I'd rather they actually went to a museum where they're guaranteed safety and security because they are very important pieces of history. I don't think they should be destroyed at all. Absolutely not. There are some people out there which collect torture devices, medieval torture devices. Now, that is totally not my cup of tea. But I wouldn't want them all to be destroyed. I don't want medieval torture devices to be destroyed, as long as they're not being used on people, not in the hands of a lunatic, just like a gun. They're only as dangerous as the person that uses them, so if they're in the hands of safe people, they're not going to be dangerous. As horrible as they may be, they are pieces of history. Should that be destroyed because it's just a tool that was used to execute? No. 
it's a piece of history. If it's an original one, as Matt, you know, how terrible the purpose may be, it's a piece of history regardless. That's the same way I view a lot of these things about, you know, from Nazi Germany. Because it's not just the weapons, it's, you know, people that collect the uniforms too. I see, I've gone a lot of videos of reenactors that are showing their kit, you know, because I'm massively interested in, you know, the German army from the Second World War and things like that. I like watching videos of all the kit and it, it fascinates me. And you always get those one or two people commenting which will say, Oh, why are you dressed in an SS Nazi uniform when it's actually a Wehrmacht uniform? Obviously, they don't know the difference. Why are you dressed in a Nazi uniform? Do you hate Jews? Are you an anti-Semite? You know, it's just, it's that kind of ignorance <laughs> that's all over the internet. It's not something that people are going to get over for a long, long time, the Second World War. I understand that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we should slam people that are just interested in it and want to collect it harmlessly. You know, and these sort of people are the same kinds of people that are probably totally unaware of what other nations, atrocities that other nations committed in the Second World War. They seem to totally be oblivious to what the Soviet Union was doing in the Second World War and before the Second World War in places like Ukraine and elsewhere. Let's not forget that um, this, you know, the infamous massacre of 25,000 Polish officers that originally was thought to be committed by the Germans and we blame the Germans for it was later found to have been the Soviet Union doing it because for anyone that doesn't know Nearer the end of September 1939, when the German, you know, just less than a month before the Germans rolled into Poland, um, the Soviet Union then attacked Poland from the east. A lot of people don't actually know that. Um, but that was okay with the Allies, so we weren't really much better for slamming the Germans for invading Poland, but we didn't say anything to the Soviet Union. We needed them on our side in order to beat the Germans. Once they'd beaten the Germans, we decided they were the, con the common enemy, and then the Cold War broke out. Obviously it wasn't that simple, but that's just briefly getting down to it. There's a lot of people that are massively offended by the swastika. And although the swastika was not developed by the Nazis, it's actually one of the oldest symbols and it's been around since 10,000 BC. Off the top of my head, I know the Sumerian civilization used it. And its original meaning, meaning uh, its definition, is quite ironic really. It actually means, you know, got the sun consciousness, the giver of life. That's actually what it represents originally. If you walked out with a hat with that on, most people would go apeshit and people would say things to you. You walk out with this, no one's offended by that, are they? Even though this is the, the Yushanka, the Cyclone Hammer, the symbol of the Soviet Union, which, you know, the Soviet Union killed several million people as well, but because they were on our side, I guess that's okay, isn't it? We're never gonna slam the Russians anywhere near as much as we slammed the Nazis. Um, you know, because a lot of people are totally ignorant. I'm not saying that justifies what the Nazis did, but it's not like they were the only ones that did things like that. There's a lot of times in history where countries which, you know, in World War II were fighting the Nazis, blame the Nazis as if they'd done something which has never been done before in human history, kill millions of people because of their ethnicity, slash religion, race, blah, blah, blah. We've done the same thing a lot of times. Like I said, I'm not saying that justifies what the Nazis did, but don't act as if they're the only ones that did things like that. We're interested in this stuff because if you look at how it compares to now, the amount of changes the, you know, the Second World War made to the world, that's why it's very interesting to a lot of people. And um, that's simply it, really. It doesn't mean that we're neo-Nazis or that we want to kill Jews, or we're anti-Semitic, as a lot of these reenactors get all the hate on YouTube, people calling them anti-Semites, they're dressing up in the uniform. Oh, you have an MP40 in a Nazi uniform, bet you'd love to kill Jews, you know. A while ago, they actually wanted to outlaw the wearing of, you know, Wehrmacht slash Nazi uniforms uh, at military shows. And I was thinking, well, are the reenactors meant to walk around in their boots and underpants and their weapons because they're not allowed to wear the uniforms? At the end of the day, someone has got to play the bad guys. They were still humans, okay? I'm not talking about the, the ones which deliberately set out to murder innocents. I'm talking about the ones that were drafted. People like my granddad. It was either join the army or go to prison. That's an easy choice, isn't it? A lot of the Germans were forced to do barbaric things. It, you know, it, that's just the way it was back then. A lot of it was forced. And I'm not defending any anyone that did anything like that, obviously. 
But the, at the end of the day, whatever side they're on, they're still people, so they deserve to be, have their memories preserved and be remembered. That's why, if you go to the War and Peace show like I do, you see a lot of Germans in you know uniforms, some even with SS and the death heads on the, you know, the, the hats. But I'm not offended by that, no. Of course I'm not. I mean, I sort of think that if you're offended by that, um, you want to ban the wearing of German uniforms at shows, I sort of think, well... Why are you even going to the shows if that offends you? If you're that sensitive, military shows or the internet for that matter are probably not the best place for you. Just don't look at it, ignore it all if it, if it offends you. Just let people be interested in what they want to be interested in. If it's not affecting somebody else, you know, what's the problem? I have this big collection of stuff. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not causing any harm with it. So I can collect it if I want. And I don't really care if people want to slap me for saying, oh, why do you collect, you know, not some Nazi gear, blah, blah, blah. It's interesting to me. Just deal with it. That's all I'm saying. Just, I know the war happened. Accept it. Move on. Let people like what they want to like if it's not harming other people. And that's the end of it, really. Because I've seen so many comments across the internet that are slamming anyone who's interested in Nazi stuff for somehow they must be an anti-Semite. There's a difference between liking Nazis and liking Nazis, if you get me. It's liking the history. It doesn't mean you like what they did and support it. There's a difference between the two. That's it, really. So, if you've got any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Post them in the comments. I'll try to reply to comments that are questions to me within 48 hours if I can. And um, thank you very much for watching, guys.